was waiting until exactly 12. <laughs> Thank you guys all for showing up. We really appreciate it. All right. Hello, welcome to the University Honors Program information session. We have a brief presentation today, followed by Q&A with a panel of current honors students, who I'll introduce after I go over some of the basics of the way the honors program operates. I'm Dr. Naomi Andrews. I'm a professor of history, and I'm also the director of the honors program. Claire Shaw. I'm Claire Shaw. I'm the Administrative Associate for the University Honors Program, the Lead Scholars Program, and the Office of Student Fellowship. All of those offices are places that you might interact over the course of your time in the University Honors Program if you come to Santa Clara. So Claire is triply useful in that regard. Um, what we're going to what I'm going to turn to now is a brief overview of the way the program operates. If you will bear with me while I do a screen share. Is that happening? That should work. That is what I want. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Are you all seeing a, a, a welcome page that has our logo on it? Yeah. Great. Thanks. Okay, so the University Honors Program at Santa Clara is a selective program that admits 68 incoming first year students every fall and an additional 20 to 30 uh, at the end of um, students first years who join at what we call level two. It is a uh, run by the two of us. We've already introduced ourselves. Um, here's our information. I'll have a slide at the end that has our email addresses. You can also find this information on our website, which I'll show you that link at the end. We encourage you to go to the website and read more detail about the way the program operates and how you would apply. So the purpose of the University Honors Program is to provide an intellectually engaged, rigorous, critical thinking education for highly motivated and focused students who want to come to Santa Clara. Uh, classes are small and the, there are a variety of different kinds of experiences that are available to honor students. And it all culminates in a year long senior thesis. We have at least one senior with us today who can talk about her thesis, Alexandra. I think maybe Joss is also a senior now. So we can, uh, we can ask them about that if you're interested. And it is a really wonderful group of students who are focused and engaged on their learn in their learning. The academic program at Santa Clara, unlike some of the programs that you might be familiar with uh, at other colleges or in universities, where it's a fully immersive, separate curriculum. Uh, Santa Clara's honors program operates in tandem with and is integrated with the core curriculum. So honors students take uh, a class called Cultures and Ideas one and two, that's a core course. Across the university, first year students take CNI. The honors students take a CNI class with other honors students. Uh, likewise, their critical thinking and writing. Likewise, religion and ethics courses. All of those are requirements for the, of the core curriculum as a whole. We just offer honor specific sections of those uh, courses um, for the honor students. The only actual classes that are required of honor students that are not required of anyone else at Santa Clara are what we call honors 20, which I'll talk about a little bit more and the senior thesis that I have mentioned already. In addition to these core courses, there are a number of honor specific sections of optional or elected courses across the campus. And there are a variety of other ways to fulfill the three elected courses that you're required to take as an honor student. If you enter as a first year student in the course of your college career, you're gonna ultimately fulfill 10 
courses, take 10 courses that count for the honors, um, for, for the honors program. Your cultures and ideas one and two, critical thinking and writing one and two, difficult dialogues. One of your four classes, uh, religion one, two, three, or ethics, and then uh, these three electives and the senior thesis. Claire, would you like to add anything else about the, these requirements? No? All right. I mentioned this special seminar called Honors 20 Difficult Dialogues. These, this is a series of courses. You only have to take one and you can choose which one you want to take. We recommend first or second year, although sometimes the right class comes along in a student's junior or senior year. And all of these courses are structured around taking a tough, thorny, controversial issue uh, and, and debate, debating it from multiple different perspectives. We have a whole series of topics. These are some recent and current classes that are being offered. Food Systems Sustainability comes out of the um, Environmental Studies and Sciences program. Here There Be Dragons is offered by a professor in the English department. Free Speech, Hate Speech, and Civil Discourse was offered last year by a philosophy professor. Cancer, Emperor of All Maladies is not too surprisingly offered by a biology professor. Currently, there's a class called Africa, Barbie Doll, and Tarzan, Myth, Facts, and Fiction. There's at least one student in that class who is in our session, uh, so if you're curious about that. And we're offering a class on global migrations and refugee movements from the sociology department. So these, this is just a sample. There are, uh, there's a huge array of these courses and they are all designed to bring together um, the group of students, you know, group of students in the honors program, not necessarily from biology or environmental sciences or English or history or sociology, but from across the disciplines to uh, debate and discuss these, um, these tough questions. And they're quite wonderful classes. Now, more pragmatically, let me tell you some of the benefits of belonging to the University Honors Program. The first is priority registration, and I think some of our students will probably attest to the value of this. In my experience with honors students, um, you're all very busy. On, on those people who want to be in the honors program and those who join the honors program often have two majors, two majors and a minor, are you know, pre-med while also majoring in history or sociology or you know, what have you. And being able to plan in a strategic way what you're taking when and knowing that you'll be able to get those classes because you have priority registration is a really useful tool to be able to fulfill your academic ambitions. The target class size for uh, honors classes is 17 students, which is significantly smaller than most other classes at Santa Clara. And it's a size that permits engaged discussion and collaboration between faculty and students, it works very well. There are some specific fellowships that are only open to honors students. One of them, and you can see one of our former students, Morris Kim, this is a few years ago, uh, he's a good example. He was an anthropology major who is finishing up medical school now. Um, Mansfield, the Mansfield Scholar uh, Fellowship is a sponsored year at Mansfield College in Oxford University in England. And the fellowship pays for most of the tuition and living expenses of that experience. It's quite a special uh, opportunity for one honor student. But beyond that, there are a number of internal grants to support research in the summer that honor students are exclusively uh, permitted to apply for and receive. The honors program also has peer mentors. So when you come in as a first year student, you uh, will be assigned a junior or a senior who can help you navigate the university, the honors program, and hopefully if the alignment is made well, uh, your major or your school. More broadly, Claire and I are very dedicated advisors uh, to honor students, and we are often in, you know, privileged to be able to help students across the curriculum figure out how to balance their different interests, what kind of a senior thesis to pursue, how to proceed with their careers even after college in some cases. 
We also work closely with the Office of Student Fellowships, which as I mentioned, or Claire mentioned, she supports as well. Uh, and that is a place where a lot of honor students um, find, their, find their way. We have at least one applicant to a major, a couple of major fellowships right now in, in the panel. And so if you have questions about that, that's a possibility. And then more broadly, we, uh, and you know, this year is an unusual year, obviously, but um, the honors community sponsors events throughout the year. If we're in person, there will be speakers and meals and decompression sessions in the period of time before finals. This year, we're doing a series of uh, conversations with faculty around, you know, hot button contemporary questions. Last week, we had one on COVID and university campuses. Um, we have one on uh, the Voting Rights Act and race and voting coming up next week. Tomorrow night, I believe there's one on women's the women's suffrage and the uh, you know the acquisition of the vote by women a hundred years ago. All of these are ways to bring together uh, honor students with faculty and with each other to talk in a concerted way about interesting engage, in, in engaging topics. Um, the most of those events are coordinated by the Honors Advisory Council, which is a student led uh, and, and manned and woman uh, council of really actively engaged students who are um, just really wonderful at bringing together the university honors community. Um, and they, they organize events, they are building a significant social media presence. If you're interested, you can follow the, uh, and I should know the name, but I'll find it while we're doing Q&A and put it in the chat if you're interested. There's an Instagram account for the honors program at Santa Clara. Uh, and as I mentioned before, they organize the mentoring connections for incoming students. And it's a really wonderful uh, group of students who really help us come together as a group and identify ourselves as members of the honors program. Okay, so that's the overview of the program, but the actually more interesting part of this presentation, I imagine, is going to be the Q&A. So if you can put your questions in the chat, we'll go through. Um, the students who are uh, on the panel have put their major in parenthesis uh, after their names. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see all of them uh, arranged. Claire, do you see the co-hosts all in one? place or no? They all show up first in the participants. They do show up first. Great. Okay. Yeah. So those of you in the audience should be able to see all of this, the students who are on the panel with their majors um, right after their names. So here's a, a slide just with a, my email address, Claire's email address, and our website. It's very simple, www.scu.edu slash honors. And please feel free to write us in with any questions that you have about um, applying to or engaging with the honors program. So the first question is who qualifies for the honors program? Okay. So do you want to answer that, Claire? Do you want me to answer that? Sure. I can see a typical honors student um, will have around a 3.9 GPA. That's like our average um, coming out of high school and that's unweighted. This year, um, we have a little bit different of a system. Santa Clara has gone to a two year non-testing um, phase in their application. So, and this leads into a se the second question, is there a separate application for honors? Yes, there is. And it can be found on our website. Um, also through the admissions portal, there will be some links to honors if you wish to apply. Um, so it is completely separate from the general common app for SCU. But back to who can um, qualify for honors. So testing is optional. While you can put your SAT and or ACT scores on our application, we are not using that as a criteria for how we accept our honors students uh, this year. We have some essay questions as well as looking at GPA and we have um, access to the common apps. So we request that uh, anyone who applies that they let us view their letters of recommendation that they received to in order to apply to Santa Clara. And we can look at other factors that have been listed separately on the SU Common App. So we're looking at 
someone who has high GPA as well, though, is being a well-rounded person and shows why they're interested in our honors program in particular. Um, a couple of other questions that came up in the chat. Um, are there any additional scholarships granted for honors students? Other than the fellowships that I mentioned in the presentation, there are not. Um, it's generally the case that honors, that students who are, who are good candidates for the honors program are already strong competitive um, academic applicants and thus um, usually are receiving some kind of um, scholarship, but not, not always by any stretch of the imagination. So I'm sorry that our budget is, is quite limited and that isn't something that we, we um, manage. It all comes through uh, financial aid. Um, let's see. Uh, Here's an interesting question. How is it balancing honors program requirements and everything else? Would any of the students like to answer that question? I'd be happy to. Um, my name is Max, I'm a junior. And um, I would say it's really not that bad for, I mean, of course it's different because now everything's online and stuff, but when I went in, it's really not that bad in the sense because when you're your first year, it's not, you're not necessarily having additional classes on top of um, other classes. So it's your honors classes become your other core classes. And so, I mean, they're a little more work, but at the same time, they're smaller. So you have more, even more access to your professor and you also get to know all the other students in your classes. Um, and as you go along, I mean, there are, you know, a few extra steps that the honors students have to do, but it really hasn't been that bad at all. Um, it's not like you're stressed all the time unless, I mean, I know some people who are in computer science. I mean, it's a little more work just because they have so much extra, but it's not too bad at all. I'm from a lot of students as well who had it. That's great, Max. Thanks. Anybody else want to? Okay. Yeah, I would oh, say yeah, it's yeah. more like reading and writing. Um, you're going to have more reading in your honors classes uh, than in your other ones. Um, I took a religion class with the same teacher um, in honors and in, without honors, and there was definitely a little bit more reading in the honors one. So, um, yeah, you're doing a lot of reading in the honors program. Yeah, um, there's another uh, just sort of factual question. Can students of any major be part of the UHP or is it exclusive to certain majors? Students can be um, from any part of the university, we have lots of engineers, we have lots of life sciences people, plenty of humanities people. We're pretty well distributed across the curriculum. That's definitely possible. And we have designed the program so that it is manageable. Um, also, I'll note that the Instagram for the honors program is in the chat if you're interested. It's at SCU honors program. Um, so, Marketing, Ryan, you're a marketing major, so is Max. Um, there's a question, what is the workload as a marketing major? And is it harder to manage as an honor student compared to not being an honor student? Yeah, I can um, kind of answer that. So for the business school, there's um, like the business requirements that you have to, that all the business students have to um, uh, complete regardless of like what your focus is in business. And then for marketing, there's just a few extra classes that you have to take. So the workload's honestly not that much. I'm only in my second year right now, so I haven't really got into like the marketing specific classes, but I feel like it also gives you an opportunity to like study something else, which is why I'm double majoring in com. That's great. Thanks. Um, another factual question that I think we didn't cover earlier. Um, and then uh, there's a great question for um, uh, for the whole panel. So I'll, I'll offer that in just a second. Um, are there different supplemental questions for the honors application? Yes. And can you apply to the honors college? And the, you, you apply to Santa Clara normally. Once you're admitted, then the application for the honors program happens later. It's in the, Feb, the due date this coming year will be April 1st. So once you know that you've been admitted to Santa Clara, then you can go ahead and apply to the honors program. That's the timeline. Uh, though you can go and take a look at the application uh, at any time. It's on our website now. 
um, and 68 students first year are admitted. So um, a couple of different questions for all the panelists. Um, what has the honors program done for you as a student? Has it helped you grow as an individual? And then a follow on, how has the honors specific, how have honors courses changed the way you look at your own major? Have you learned something you have never heard of or were not initially interested in? Any of you guys want to jump in and answer well, those questions? Yeah. I'd love to answer this question if I can. So I studied mechanical engineering and there's not a lot of opportunities to take more critical classes or classes outside my major, but the honors program has been really beneficial for me because um, the classes that I got to take were these interesting subjects like history and philosophy that I wasn't introduced to. And so I definitely think it ties into the Santa Clara value of you know holistic learning um, because otherwise the schedule for my major is just really tight and it's very technically focused and scientifically focused. Um, and so I like that the honors program brought those two into kind of a whole. Um, and then also with the honors program, it opened up for me as an engineer opportunities that I didn't think about. So for example, this quarter I'm applying for a Fulbright scholarship. Um, and that's not something I think I would have considered if I hadn't been interacting with the honors program um, and seen that other honors students were doing that. Um, and that's something I'm appreciative of. So to answer that question. That's great. I'll add on something to that as well. And specifically as what has it done for you as a student? So I came in, so I'm from Washington and I came to Santa Clara and I didn't actually, I didn't know anybody. So, you know, people in California will sometimes come and they know people from their schools, but because of the honors program, uh, because of the core classes, when you're a freshman, you are in the classes multiple times a week with the same people. So I found it very helpful in getting to know people who were, um, you know, similar, similar like level. And it also, because you have the same people in the same classes. So for me, it helped get to know people uh, in classes. And then it also uh, allowed me to get to know certain professors a lot. So I still go to some of those professors, including Dr. Andrews when I have questions and stuff. Um, so the honors program, because it sort of helps insulate a little bit when you first come in, it, I think it really helps you get to know people and it also helps um, you get to know people outside of your school as well, because the honors program is includes students from all the different schools. So since I'm in the business school, I know lots of people in the engineer or in the arts and sciences school and stuff like that, um, because I had these classes with the same students. And another point is that you see a lot of the same students again as you go on. So I had people that I saw freshman year classes that I also had in my honors 20 classes. So it really helps you get to build the community, I think. Also, I kind of wanted to add on to that. Um, so for, I know this is not very helpful right now, but hopefully for next year, if we are back in dorms, uh, the honor students live in three dorms to themselves, which are uh, McLaughlin- That's actually Walsh. four, but yeah. Oh, four, yeah, McLaughlin, yeah. Walsh, Casa, Graham, and there's one more. Oh, done. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's, and there's always events going on inside the buildings and stuff like that. So I feel like you really get to like build a community within the honors program. And especially if you go to like different community events that they put on, it's really kind of like a family, like within the school, I, I feel like. Yeah, I really like that as well. Uh, kind of jumping off of that, Ryan and I both lived in McWalsh our freshman year, and we also had our CTW together. So just kind of like, a fun connection you get to know people really well um and thus like a lot of my friends initially started out with the honors program because like those are the people you kind of meet initially and then what i like about the honors classes is that they're smaller which i mean we talked about earlier you get to have a more communal feel in your class sometimes when the class is bigger especially online it's really hard to kind of have a discussion but also to like get to know your classmates. So it's really nice to have a more personal class. That's great. Anybody else wanna lean on that? I can add on. I feel yeah. like um, when the discussion part for me was the big part that I kind of saw that really helped me. Um, Cause I'm the person that aside from like reading the text and like answering some questions for it, um, or reflecting on it, like having a discussion with other students is really helpful to kind of just digest um, and kind of how they were saying, it is a lot more reading, but those discussions that you have in honors, in honors classes, because they're like small groups of students are really helpful to really understanding like the material um, and kind of branching out from there. And I, for me personally as well, it kind of helped me um, also like for my honors 20 class, I took uh, the food systems 
class that was on the slide and I'm a child studies and ethnic studies major. So I'm totally on kind of the same side, but um, that's an environmental studies type of class, but it was really interesting to just kind of branch out um, and get to really dive in into different types of like majors when it comes to like the honors 20. That's great. A um, couple more fact-based questions and then a few more um, for the panelists. Um, let's see, is it required to live in an honors dorm? Yes, it is. Um, and I think we now understand maybe that question was probably asked before the comments that Ryan and Bianca made, but now. Well, yes, yes and no. Well, if you're if you're a student and this is an abnormal year, but last year there was supposed to be or this coming up year um, where every first year student had to be a, a resident on campus yeah. unless mm -hmm. they got an exception. Yeah. Um, so if you were to get an exception, you could still be in the honors program. You just have to be in one of the four honors RLCs, ah. and that is only a requirement for your first year. Yeah. So, but but I I'm only aware of one exception in the last three years to that. So the norm would be that you're going to be in the dorms, in one of those four dorms. Um, so um, let's see. Uh, is let's see. Is it, uh, are there different networking? Are there different networking opportunities for honor students? I mean, within, yeah, I mean, the Honors Advisory Council does, um, uh, has actually got a great new LinkedIn page and they bring alums to campus to, or to, to, to Zoom to talk about, uh, about um, their, their careers. So yeah, I think that there are some. Um, okay, let's see. Um, um, I have another one. Are you able to go into the Honors Program undeclared? Yes. Absolutely, you can, definitely. And then yes. another one is the GPA for honors program weighted on a 5.0 scale. In college, your classes will not be weighted if that's your question. If you mean, will your college honors classes count more towards your GPA? No, they won't. No. Um, it is possible. There are a couple questions in here that suggest if you're a commuter student, you can absolutely be, um, be in the honors program. If you're, we're just talking about, you can't decide you wanna live in, live in Swig Hall and be in the honors program just because Swig seems like a more fun dorm. Um, but if you're not living on campus, we have we have many commuter students around, and that's um, totally uh, a possibility. Um, let's see. Um, do honor students get more opportunities for internships or research? I think that the answer to that is yes, because they tend to build strong relationships with their professors which yield opportunities for that. And they tend to be academically focused and, um, and, and do a good job of finding the opportunities that are available to them. And so that all sort of um, leads to uh, more internship possibilities and more engagement with, with those kinds of things. Um, yeah, yeah just, just really to clarify that um, if you are living at home and that's for financial or personal reasons, entirely possible to be part of the honor, honors program. Um, There's a question about, is the admission process holistic and would, it, would you be at a great disadvantage if you have a lower GPA? And when I said earlier, the average GPA is 3.9, again, that's the average. And we do look at the application holistically, the student ho uh, holistically, so if you might have had a lower GPA, there's a place in the application to kind of explain that. Um, we're really wanting students who want to be in the honors program, which we, we can glean from the uh, essay questions. So if you're going to apply, don't phone in those questions. We read every single one, <laughs> we get a lot of information yeah. out of them. <laughs> yeah. um, so a couple more practical questions and then a few more big ones for the panelists. Um, uh, you still take non-honors classes while in the program. Absolutely. As I said, it's only 10 of the, I don't know, what's the normal um, 48 classes that you take as an undergraduate if you take four a quarter. Um, only, only 10 of them are from the, for the honors program. Um, and you can leave the program at any time if it's not a good fit. You send an email to me or to Claire or both of us and you say, this isn't working out for me, it's fine. Um, that's not a problem. Um, okay, uh, some questions for the um, panelists. 
Is having priority registration very beneficial? Are classes at SU harder to get into as a freshman sophomore? Um, and then the follow on is what is your favorite part of the honors program? Well, the easy answer is yes. It's good. It's always better to have the priority registration simply because you get you get to have your schedule faster. Um, I mean, it, and regarding our classes hard to get into, I mean, I've had some classes where, I mean, they fill up really fast and some classes where they don't. I mean, it's really just, it, it, I mean, it's kind of luck based. Like, I mean, some people, I'm in the uh, business school. So, you know, sometimes a one quarter just randomly, a ton of people are trying to get into econ, you know, three or whatever. So some of those classes will fill up fast, but having the priority registration does, um, uh, it definitely helps. And also because honor students often are taking a few more classes, it also means that they might have a higher standing. So then that also bumps them up a little bit as well. So I, yeah, the priority registration I found really helpful in helping bid, build my schedule so that I'm able to take all the classes I need. And then my favorite part of the program, I would say is sort of, as I talked about the learning in specific classes, like with your, this specific students, but then also, um, the different talks that are put on by the program I really like for especially the ones honor students get a special privilege of being able to attend talks put on by the university president so I know there's one coming up by Father O'Brien and I mean last year with uh, Father Ang we had several so I think those are really nice and you actually get to know the person who's you know helping run the school so yeah. That's great. Yeah other people? Joss we haven't heard from you. You transferred from another school. What are you, What's your experience been like? Yeah, I feel like the honors program has been really supportive and helping me kind of through that, through that transition. Um, let's see what. Oh, oh, priority registration and favorite part of the. Okay. Uh, yeah, priority registration is very helpful. As like an art student, there's some classes that are just like 14 students and the advantage is very beneficial because sometimes those classes fill up within a day or even a couple hours. So kind of having that priority registration just helps you get those classes that you want slash need. And um, something I like about the honors program is the conversations that you get to be a part of. For example, I attended a conversation last week about the coronavirus in colleges. And we kind of had a conversation with one of the professors about the possibilities of returning to campus. How does that look like? Um, daily screenings or stuff like that, which was really informational and kind of thinking in the perspective of just what college is gonna be like in the future. That's great, thanks. Anybody else wanna weigh in on it, Bianca? Yeah, just echoing what everyone else said. Like, yes, it is beneficial. I've seen friends like who can't get the classes they need or want, like, but you can kind of check both those boxes. You can get the things that you need, but also like really interesting stuff. I've been really um, excited to take some really interesting courses uh, at the school, which thankfully, because I have that priori priority registration, like you can get into them and it's a lot less stressful because you get to register, you know, of course earlier. And um, kind of related to that, my favorite part has definitely been the classes I've taken. Um, like I took, uh, well, I took Dr. Andrew CNI, which was great. Um, it was, I mean, obviously she's a great teacher, but, uh, the community was, uh, so awesome. And I have so many friends from that class who I can still like talk to, even though we're like in virtual, but you have really interesting conversations. Um, I have in all my honors classes and you read really cool stuff and, um, but you also make friends. It's just a really cool experience and you get to know your professors really well. It's just an overall awesome learning environment. Great. Um, let's see, a couple more practical questions. Um, let's see. Um, I see one about tuition. Is tuition higher for the honors program? No, it's the same tuition. And then question above that, can honor students study abroad? Absolutely, yes. Many of our honor students study abroad. Yeah, that's great. Claire, I don't know exactly the answer to the um, the, you get a bachelor's of science with, with honors? Oh, I, I'm not no. exactly sure what you mean by that question either, whoever wrote it, but um, when you're in the university honors program and you successfully complete it, 
it will say university honors program on your official transcript. It does not say that on your diploma and your major is what dictates the BS, the BA, um, the Bachelor of Commerce. So, and that is dictated by major. So when you're in honors, again, it, it shows up on your transcript, not your diploma. And then a, a, another um, sort of factual question, if you are applied and denied, is your application considered for non-honors? I think what I'm, if I'm understanding that correct question correctly, there's a concern that if you apply to the honors program and you're turned down, that will somehow affect your admission to the university as a whole. And just to reiterate, um, first of all, no. And second of all, um, you apply to the university first. And once you've been admitted, then you apply to the honors program and there will be no, there's no sort of backseas at that point. Um, if they're, they're separate processes that we use some of the same material. Um, and yes, so here, one of the questions about it here is about how people enter into the honors program. There are two ways. If you are offered a presidential or provost scholarship, or if you are a semi-finalist for a program called the Johnson Scholars Program, then you are automatically invited to join the honors program and you don't have to apply. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't apply if you don't receive one of those, um, fellow, those scholarships. Most of our class every year is made up of students who are, um, who are applicants to the program. Um, the, another question, let's see, there was one more. Okay, are the dorms that honor students have to live in better? I don't know. I don't think I'm prepared to answer that question. Uh, the four dorms, I'll, I'll let you guys repeat what they are. Anybody want to weigh in? None, which is the Modern Perspectives RLC. Yeah. What is uh, called McWalsh, which is Walsh and McLaughlin, which is Unity RLC. Um, Graham, which is the Alpha RLC. And um, Casa Italiana, which is the Da Vinci RLC. What about the dorms? Are they better? Uh, I would say that generalist, um, simply because it's, they're the ones, most of them, or, or at least I think the majority, for example, Graham is, you know, you have your own bathroom, not you individually, but you have a room with two people, a bathroom, a room with another two people. Um, I would say they're also generally slightly newer. So I would say overall they are better. Yeah. Okay. Ryan, you were about to say something. Yeah. I would just say it kind of depends like so usually the non-honors dorms are the more they're more social so like the honors dorms you'll have like students studying and stuff but in the non-honors dorms you might hear people having like gatherings or whatever while you're trying to study or people are on a Wednesday night just having fun rather than like trying to get their work done. So mm -hmm. I feel like in the honors dorms, there's more, there's still like social and like events and you'll make friends and stuff like that. But in those dorms, the students are more focused on their work and trying to like get stuff done rather than just going to college to party. Yeah. So also just to be clear, the majority of the population in the honors dorms are not in the honors program. So with 68 first years, there are about 17 or 18 students in each of those four dorms and that, that's a minority. Um, but I think it does set, a, there seems to be like a tone of a little bit more calm. Maria, were you gonna say something? I was just gonna agree that yeah. I lived in Muck Walsh my freshman year and it is more of like, a, you definitely can find a space to kind of just sit down and like read your, read a book for your class and kind of work on like doing your homework versus like swig where I've heard it's very noisy and stuff like that. Cool. And I'd say that's a very good thing. You don't want the place where you're living to be the place that's <laughs> like gets gross and stuff. So one of the questions in here, um, thank you all for that, um, was what, let's see, let me, this was back a little ways. What, um, what criteria are we looking for in, in honor students? Let me just find the actual question. Um, to, to do. What characteristics do you look for in a UHP candidate? Yeah, so um, at a, a very high level, I would say um, we look for students who want to be involved in their community, who are really curious and who have shown their, those qualities in their high school experience, have 
been involved with extracurriculars, uh, not for the sake of the extracurricular on your common app, but because of a genuine passion for that engagement. We do look for strong students, um, but you know, there sometimes there we have definitely got plenty of uh, students in the honors program who are a little lopsided. Their grades are very high, and their uh, test scores are not as high. That is something we sort of recognize is that people have different learning styles and, and we have some room. I know- But again, I, test I, scores are not a criteria this year. Yeah. No, they're not a criteria this year, but they historically have been an indicator and a criteria. So, or you know, among the criteria. Um, but I think we also look for students who, you know, um, who want to pull their weight in, in, in group activities. One of the things that, oh, if you if you zoomed into this info session, you're probably one of the students that when you're doing a group project at school, you find yourselves doing a lot. Yes, Adrian recognizes this. Doing a lot of the work, right? I see a few nodding heads. Well, one of the things that's great about the honors program is that when you're in honors classes, you are with a class full of students who were that person in high school, and it makes the collaboration and teamwork just, you know, really it sparkles, it's great. Um, people, uh, they show up, they pull their weight. Um, I've been really fortunate to be teaching in the honors program for I think like 13 or 14, 14 years. And I've had taught a lot of honors students and the classroom context is just really stimulating and engaged. Everybody shows up having done the work and it just makes for a really great learning environment. So we want people who are gonna bring bring their game to class and not just be doing that because they're, you know, sort of fulfilling some requirement or somebody else's expectations. Um, we have questions. We have just a couple minutes. We have four minutes before this is over. Um, oh, are, this, are the students grouped together in the dorms in related majors or is it by selection or random assignment? So there is a form when you um, are accepted to Santa Clara and then you say yes and you have to fill out housing preferences um, and something called a SPIF form and that has questions that lead you to kind of choose and you wind up ranking your RLC so it it's by interest it's not by major but a lot of times the interest does kind of lend itself to majors so you might wind up having a lot of the same majors but it's really by interest in what you indicate on your RLC preference form. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so one more one more question, which I think is a good way for us to um, to close. And because I think um, the students can answer it and then I could also answer it as well. The question is, is there more interaction with professors typically compared with non honors? Anybody want to talk Quickly, I would say that just on the average, the answer is yes. Uh, for a few reasons. First being that when you're in the universe, when you're in the honors classes, the first classes in honors 20, it is again, a, a lot of the times more conversation based. So it's the professor isn't lecturing the whole time. I mean, there's sometimes, you know, the professor will, you know, give an overview of the reading or something to make sure everybody has understands the points, but then it's like a class discussion where the professor will kind of step back and observe, but then also, you know, add stuff in. And then there's also, you get to know those professors. So you go for them uh, for questions and stuff, or if you're looking for, you know, scholarships or something like that, you might go to them for letters of recommendation. So I'd say just overall, yeah, there's a lot, there's, I mean, not a ton, but there's definitely more interaction with the professors and, and it's, it's beneficial, it's helpful. I think it's very good. Yeah, to kind of agree with Max, I, I think it really just depends also on what the kind of class is. So there might be honors classes offered for like math, you're obviously not going to develop a very personal relationship with your math professor, but you will be interacting with that person versus like a philosophy class or discussion based class like math is saying. Um, those are opportunities where you maybe go to your professor's office hours more and then you talk about, um, you know, topics related to the text, maybe it leads to topics in your life. So it just is kind of based off of your own interest and how much you want to be interacting with professors as well. Um, and that holds true for non honors classes too. Yeah, Santa Clara is, I mean, we pride ourselves as a university on um, a high degree of engagement between faculty and students, but 
the small size of the honors um, classes does definitely makes it more possible for those close connections to be made. Anybody, any students have any further comments on this? All right, well, it's 1244. Um, thank you all for coming and listening to the session. Please, please write us if you have questions. Um, we're, we're eager to answer them. And um, we wish you all very good luck with your college application process. Stay healthy and safe and try to have some fun and get some sleep while you're uh, going through this crazy fall that we're all living through. Um, just a few other yeah. things someone asked, okay. will this session be available? Is it being recorded? That's yes. the last question. Yes. And where do they go to find that? That I don't know. Claire Kreeft is right here though, and I think can answer that question. Yeah, I can chime in about that. Um, so we are compiling all of the sessions, recordings of every open house session, and we are going to um, edit and you know trim the excess uh, fat off of the videos from before and after the actual session, um, but those will be all up by the end of the month. And so we will be sending an email to any student that was registered for open house and you'll get access to all of the recordings. Great. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you students for participating in this with us. Claire, you're turning this off, right? Um, I'm just, someone asked for me to type oh. in the email. No, I just did it. Again, I just so did I'm it. doing that right now. No, I just did it. Oh, I you did. just did it too. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Okay. Also, just anybody who's asking for our contact, you can absolutely go to our website and you'll find all of that information as well. Great. All right. Okay. Bye, everybody. Good luck. Um, should I turn this off, Claire? Claire Creed? Uh, yep, whenever you just end the session, the live stream will stop. So, whenever. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay. <laughs>